My first step when I make a set of scales is I plan it out on paper. I typically don't use a generic scale shape. I usually design a different shape for, for every razor. The reason I do this is to both make it unique and also to ensure a good fit. I also think it helps the aesthetic look of the razor when you design a set of scales specifically for it. So what you need is a uh, pencil and some paper. The little frogs on the pencil here is a bonus. So if you have a pencil like this, you may get better results. So you really have two options here. Uh, you could either freehand it or you could trace the razor first and then draw the scale on it. I'll do it either way, just depending on how, uh, how I feel about the razor. So, being an 1850 razor, I decided on a fairly classic shape for the scale. I'm going to be using black horn, and I think that this shape is going to look great in it. I went with a classic rounded pivot end and a slightly squared off wedge end, which is fairly reminiscent of old Wade and Butchers and stuff like that. So the next step here is to cut this out with a pair of scissors. I kind of follow the insides of the lines here because when I do trace this onto my scale material it's going to get a little bit larger so I want to make sure that it's going to even out in the end. And if this isn't perfect, that's okay. The shapes of the ends are really going to going to be finalized when you're shaping the actual material. So now that I have this cut out, I can look at it on the razor to see how it'll fit, which I pretty much know that it's going to look, look pretty good because I, I had traced the razor on the piece of paper there. So, But you can kind of look at it, you can see how, how it'll look open, um, how it'll look in the shaving position, right? Everything looks good to me. so. I'm going to go ahead with this, this particular design. So I have a stack of black horn here from Macecraft Supply. The guys over at Macecraft are pretty cool. They've taken half inch blanks that they sell and they've actually split them. They've ripped them down the, down the center for me and it turns into uh, two, two pieces and they've, they've only been charging me for the, for the one. So that's really cool of them. And, uh, I highly suggest Macecraft for, for any horn supplies. So I'm going to pick out a uh, piece of horn for this razor and then I'll be tracing that, that template onto, onto the blank. When you're choosing a blank, sometimes you may actually want some interesting patterns in the horn. And depending on the, on the slabs that you get, every once in a while you'll see some that have some interesting 
uh, striations in the in the horn here. And uh, so these ones I may save for for a razor that that I actually want to have those those marks in it. Otherwise, you can just put them on the insides of the scales, and they're hidden. So if you don't want those marks, then you can just stick them on the insides of the scales. Or sometimes you can just sand down until until those disappear. But many times they go all the way through the through the blank, depending on the blank. That's one of the interesting things about natural materials is you you'll always get uh, some patterns or possibly even things that you don't want in them. I've had to pass on using a few blanks before. Many times you won't even know that there's an imperfection in the blank until you've got to the point where you have sanded it up to maybe 600 or even 800 grit. And then once you take it to the buffer it becomes very apparent that there's, there's an imperfection in the horn. Now, personally, I like, I like the imperfections. I think it adds character to the razor and reminds you that it's a natural material. So for me, I think the, the imperfections are a big plus on horn. I've chosen a blank here. It looks fairly solid black, and uh, I think it's going to look great on this razor. An extra fine tip Sharpie works great for this step. So long as my slab is large enough, I always trace and then flip the scale and trace it again. This makes it so that this surface will be facing out on both sides of the razor. This will make the scales aesthetically match better. If I did it like this and traced one and then traced the next one next to it, that would make this side facing out on one side of the scale and then this side facing out on the other side of the scale and there may be differences in the striations or the look of the horn between the two sides. So I always try to do it in this, this fashion. The next step is to take this to a bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could cut it out using a coping saw. 